All right. Hey, Shalom, everybody. Shalom. To the east. Ha'alah, Yahweh. Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai. Ba'ashim, Rakaq Badash. Double honor to the apostles. And the elders of Great Millstone for pushing 100% truth and rule well. Peace and salutations to the hopeful elect. Shalom. Uh, this is Baka Yaramana. Uh, I'm going to try to make this a quick lesson for about an hour and a half, maybe two hours. Uh, you know, uh, you know, it's supposed to rain later on this afternoon, so it's getting getting kind of windy. So I want to try to, I'm going to, I guess I'm going to, hold on, hold on, y'all. I'm going to move this over here a little closer to this so I can try to push this down into the ground. Right. You know, so it don't fall over. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know. Anyway, I hear I got a sign saying that Yahweh Shah Hamashiach is a Negro from Zabatuda. As you can see, these people, they don't get it. They're checking it out. They don't understand it. They was taught that Sister Ray Borgia that gay homosexual boyfriend of Leonardo da Vinci, okay, was the son of God. And they supposed to worship this motherfucker out of fear. The women, I think they figured it out years ago, but they going along with the narrative of the white man so they can get the benefits of the EBT cards and fucking welfare and HUD housing. That's what they trying to do, okay? But anyway, uh, I was just going in the spirit today, you know what I mean, because uh, uh, the Swift Bank, uh, I forgot what the uh, the acronym for SWIFT uh, stands for. Uh, 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 I, I forget what it, what it stands for. I should have wrote it down. But uh, it's the, the Bank of International Settlements. It's uh, overall the whole thing, which is the Rothschild family, the banking family. And what they're trying to do is they're trying to swiftly transact in digital currency now. Um, and they're, they're going to try the pilot program in Australia at the, uh, I forget what's the name of it, it's called uh, uh, Macquarie Bank down in, uh, uh, in, in Australia. And what they're trying to do down there is they want to do away with all cash, all fiat currency, and switch immediately over to central bank digital currency, okay? by November the 1st, on a Friday, okay? That's the day most people get paid. They go to the bank to get the money, get to the, pay their bills, they can't pay their fucking bills no more. They said the only way you'll be able to transact is to have, take out $2,000 per day out of an ATM. Now, they've already taken down in Australia, 718, almost 750 ATM machines. So to find an ATM machine is very rare, hard, and in between. By the time you do get there, there won't be any money left in it for you to get out. See, they're forcing people to make a decision whether you're going to be able to participate in the new cashless society, which is the image that these beast-like, animalistic, Edomite, Neanderthals that you call Caucasians, okay, at the top, the World Economic Forum, Bank of International Settlements, uh, the Bilderberger Group, right, the World Health Organization, these individuals that make world decisions, okay, you know, these individuals, okay, they're going to be trying to do everything they possibly can by any means necessary to get your ass to take that radio frequency identification micro C hip, the size of a grain of rice, okay, grain of rice, about uh, 11 centimeters, millimeters in height, little bitty fucking thing, but they put it up in, in your hand between your, your index and your thumb. This is where they want to put the motherfucker, okay? You can't buy nothing, you can't sell nothing. You got to go through the stress and anguish of your woman tripping when the lights go out for you standing stiffly for the name of the Lord and standing stiffly in faith trying to obey God's commandment by not being a part of taking the mark of the B-O-M-O-T-B, uh, right? That's an acronym for Mark of the Beast, right? And we had to create that acronym for uh, Esau Edom and his wicked bullshit, you know, by changing the, uh, 
the algorithm on YouTube to start taking down channels. That's the reason why I came out here. I'm still, my channel is still, when this when this video is made, if you check the timestamp, it was made during the time that my channel was shut down for two weeks. Okay? So I'm still doing the work. I don't give a fuck. I'm still doing the work out here preaching, doing the best I can to spread the word of the people. Because it's time for a lot of our people to repent. They ain't gonna do it, man. They like smoking weed, getting high, getting boxed, robbing them, fucking their brother's sister, brother's cousin, you know, all of the shit. They, that's, they love it, okay? Most so-called black people love it here. They love it here, man. And what we try to do is try to persuade a few of them that have common sense enough and integrity with dignity to stand up for themselves for once instead of being a goddamn welcome mat. Okay, for Tom, Dick, and Harry and Willie Lunch meeting on the Sam Sausage. Okay, and I apologize about cussing so much, but I mean, we're running out of time. And I gotta do whatever the fuck I gotta do in order to get the people's attention to, so this way they'll understand that they're at the end of their rope. All of this good, having a good time, getting high, getting boxed, getting money, all that shit, this shit's over with, man. Okay? Now, Esau hated by God. Okay, I got this as an excerpt, typed it out, uh, out of the book, Who is Esau Edom? Okay, I have a sign over here telling you who Esau Edom is. They're from the bloodline of Amalek. These individuals that call themselves the JEWs, they're not the true people of the Bible. They say that the only way that you can convert to being a JEW, the Bible says that you have to be a JEW by blood, by kindred, according to the flesh. See, the flesh. You have to be born by the seed of your fathers, like it tells you in Numbers chapter 1, verse 18. It don't tell you by the by the, the womb of your mother. You see how wicked an Esau is as a carbon copy to everything that the Most High God had set up? They're goddamn. If the Most High says go left, they go right. If Most High says go right, they go left. You see what I'm saying? This is what they do, man. And nobody can't see the shit except for us uh, for some reason. Okay? Maybe it was the, uh, the, the great and abundant mercy of the Most High uh, through the Holy Spirit. That's what I believe. That's what you believe or if you're watching this video. Okay? So, I mean, that's, hey, these people are insane. Esau hated by God. Perhaps the most unique and unusual attribute possessed by Esau Edom is his adverse relationship with God. Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shai. It's adverse. The motherfucker is completely opposite of all righteousness, man. If he say go to the bathroom, he'll go outside and piss on the side of a wall. That's what he'll do, man. Okay, and then he tries to be righteous and pretend to be righteous, tell you to wash your hands. What did Yahweh Shai Hamashiach say about washing your hands? You know, that's uh, the fear of God taught to you by the precept of men of the washing of hands and pots and pans and, and other things that you do. Right? See? Anyway, the script reveals that Yahweh never had any love for Esau as he did with Jacob. And in fact, God hates Esau. So God doesn't love everybody like these Edomite devils have taught you at church where you just left down the street. Okay? Okay? Or around the corner down there. Or is it uh, this Catholic church down the fucking street this way? Okay? The, the so called black neighborhood is filled with churches. We're being over churched and there's no truth coming out. None! I'm here to tell you the truth where you were here for a bear. It's not about your emotional standpoint. Okay? It's about doing the right thing. Doing what God tells you to do or be exterminated, goddammit. That's where we're at in this thing. Okay? It's time to change your mind. Okay, it's time to change your mind because the Son of God is coming to exterminate two-thirds of his own people just to show you he's means business. Okay, that's a lot of bodies because the Most High said also that the children of Israel shall number as the sands of the sea. But, like it tells you in Isaiah 10 and 20, 21, 22, only a remnant shall be saved, right?
the scripture reveals that God never had any love for Esau as he did with Jacob. And in fact, God hates Esau. Okay. And it says, I have loved you, which is Israel, says the Lord. Yet you say, how hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, says the Lord, yet I love Jacob. And this, this, this part here is underlined. And I've hated Esau. Why does the Most High God hate Esau? Yeah, yeah, yeah. God hates. It's true. Okay? Pick up that Bible and read it. You gotta go and go listen to some lying motherfucker at the church. That's what they need to do, man. But they ain't gonna do it. Okay? All I'm trying to do is the people that are willing to listen and walk by and hear my words are interested in these pictures and why I put them up like it tells you in Ezekiel uh, chapter 37 verse 18. What meanest thou thy, by these? That's the reason why I made so many of them. To give the people an opportunity to actually see what the Bible is saying, right? About these, these, uh, these depictions, these pictures. Okay, so this way they can see what the Bible is saying. Because clearly, these people are not reading their Bible. They would not go along with the world narrative saying that God loves everybody bullshit. Okay, if that was the case. All right, now, and laid his mountains, which is his government, and his heritage, which is his bloodline, waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Right? That God's hatred and anger towards Esau, Edom, is not a one-time event and is conveyed in the fact that Edom, let's go to the next page, that Edom, were the people against whom the Lord has indignation forever. Malachi chapter one, verse four, right? This is no mistransla uh, mistranslation as the same concept is also conveyed in the New Testament, right? As it was written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Romans chapter nine, verse 13, right? This hatred by the Most High God in heaven, Yahweh by Shem, Yahweh Shai, okay, towards Esau is an attribute that the human heart cannot accept or embrace, and therefore many will try to explain it away. That's where they come with this God loves everybody bullshit. No, he doesn't. The Most High, Yahweh by Shem, Yahweh Shai chose one people above all nations that are upon the face of the earth. Don't believe it? Go read it. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 2. God damn it. Okay, he chose Israel. 2 Ezra chapter 3, verse 16. Thou hast chosen Jacob to thee and put by Esau. And so Jacob became a great multitude, not Esau. Okay, why? Hebrews chapter 12, verse 16 lest any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. Okay, he sold it. He sold immortality in the kingdom of heaven for a goddamn Campbell's can of soup because it was fast food. Now you know where the concept of fast food came from. Now you know why in 30 days fast food for 30 days will kill your punk ass. Every goddamn thing will start failing your kidneys, your liver, your heart. Every day, you'll start dying after 30 days of eating that bullshit every day. They made proof of it. They made a movie of it. Talking about Super Size Me. Go watch it. It's on YouTube. Okay? Fast food restaurant. And then when we try to tell you to your face, you think we're telling you a fucking lie. So the most out of the is, is getting, we're getting tired of the bullshit. It's about time for the ministry to close because these goddamn animals I want to have the unmitigated audacity to try to shut down the whole internet and call it some geomagnetic super force from outer space, okay? In order to wipe out your bank account, wipe out your retirement 401k plan. That's the plan, to force you and to back you against the wall where you don't have a choice but to take the MOTV, which is the mark of the beast. We're telling you what it is. We did the research, we found out what it was. Okay? White man is telling you to your fucking face what it is. Okay? And you're not, you're not paying attention. 
okay? This hatred by God towards Esau is an attribute that the human heart cannot accept or embrace. And therefore, many will try to explain it away. The scores of theologians have avoided the truth of scripture or have whitewashed it into something more appealing to human nature. That's where the that goddamn bullshit God loves everybody came from. God loves one people, one, and fuck the rest. And that's what we try to explain to you, but you can't deal with that. That's the reason why I brought these excerpts from the book, Who is Esau Edom? Now you know why God hate this motherfucker. Because he got, uh, he went out there and despised his own birthright. That was a gift given to him by the great God who created all things. And this motherfucker despised it and sold it for a motherfucking uh, uh, goddamn McDonald's Happy Meal, pretty much. Okay, <laughs> okay, bread, pottage, and lentils is dear meat stew. You sold it for a fucking pot roast? Yeah, I'd hate his ass too. I give you eternal rulership over your, over your family, your children, your brethren for all eternity and give you immortality and you spurn it for a goddamn sandwich? Fuck you, you know? Yeah, I, I feel the same way. <laughs> yeah, idiot. Now he's trying to get it back by default, right? He's trying to measure the heavens above. He's trying to scour out the uh, from the uh, from the uh, the foundations of the earth beneath, trying to get to the bottom of the Mariana Trench. He sent a satellite into outer space, Voyager One, back in the '60s, trying to measure outer space, right? But the Most High God stretches out the heavens like a garment. Okay. How big is that garment? Only the most high in heaven know. Okay? So these Edomite devils are done, man. They think that's the only way that they can win back their birthright is to kill off the Israelites and the inheritance of the most high God, Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah in heaven. That's the only way they think that they can do that. Okay? Is to kill us all off at once, putting us in FEMA, uh, FEMA camps, Federal Emergency Management Agency camps, in a time of civil unrest, because on November the 1st, like I said, if they bring that shit to America, this time next year, it's going to be complete chaos. People can't pay their bills. People can't go to work and get paid unless you have the microprocessor, the side of a grain of rice, implanted underneath your skin. That's the only way you'll be able to participate in a cashless society. It must be implanted underneath your, your skin. Okay, that way they can keep track of your uh, your 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 biology, your heart, your blood pressure to see if you get sick. Right? They can get. I'm telling you, man, this is what's up. Okay, and what we're trying to do is wake you ass us up, get you to repent, to come away out of the ways of this world, man. Stop going out to the fucking club. What you going out there for? To get shot? Huh? To get drunk? Date rape? Is that what it is? Get your ass out of them clubs and come up out of them churches and study to show thyself approved unto the Most High God. Because we must all appear before the faith, the uh, stand, we must all must appear before the Son of the Most High God. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. This shit here is ridiculous, man. People don't, they don't get it, man. <laughs> Ever been? Uh, what is it? Second Corinthians. Chapter 5, verse 10. Right? For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Hamashiach that everyone, everyone, that means living or dead, may receive the things done in his body according to that he had done, whether it be good or bad. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. But we are made manifest unto Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, and I trust also are made manifest in your conscience. So we're trying to do everything we can by preaching the word of God to you, breaking down these biblical scriptures to your face, whether you will accept it or whether you will reject it, okay, in the hopes that you will repent and come out of the ways of this world. You are at the end of your fucking rope, man. You are done. 
The son of the Most High, Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shah, is almost here, man. When he gets here, he's not your friend. He is not your brother. He's coming to kill your punk ass because you had an opportunity to repent while the doors of mercy and grace were open, but you despised it. Like it tells you in 2nd Ezra chapter 9, verse 12. The same must know it after death by pain. Okay, let's get it. Uh oh. Damn. That's all, kid. I left it at home. I left my parking pad at the house trying to hurry up and get out of here. Yep, yeah, that's all, kid. Yep, sure did. Yeah. Oh, well. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and keep on going. Okay, I just wanted to let you know. That's why they pushed that God loves everybody. You at the end of your rope, they finna push this RFID chip, microchip, microprocessor, uh, a silicon processor. Okay, wait a minute, fair use, fair use, fair use disclaimer. This video is for educational purposes only, okay? It's just to educate the people, let them know, give, make them, uh, give an opportunity to make a decision, okay? Well, while the doors of mercy are open, that's all it's about, man. We're not trying to cause no problem. We're not no goddamn T-E-R-R-O-R-I-S-T. -R -R okay? That's not us. All we're doing is standing up stiffly and boldly for the name of the Lord before the face of those that have afflicted us with oppression in the land of our captivity. That's all we're doing. We're standing up boldly before the face of these goddamn devils because they're going to come down with great wrath. Like it tells you in Revelation 12 and 12, because the devil hath come down unto you having great wrath because he knoweth he hath but a short time. Right? And the Bible tells us, rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell therein. Right? Who dwells in heaven? The angels. Right? Esau Edom has been marked, he has been numbered, and he has been found wanting because he is adverse to all righteousness. These goddamn Edomites drive by here in brand new trucks laughing and giggling at the signs out here. I wish y'all could have seen it, man. This motherfucker on the top. I looked over, he's laughing, pointing at the sign. That sign I got in here with Jesus, uh, Jesus Christ, punk bitch superstar, uh, with horns coming out of his head. They think that shit's funny because they, they, they know these Edomite devils, they know the truth. Okay, they know that the Son of God is a Negro. Okay, they know it. They just don't want you to know it. Okay. A quick prayer for faith. Shema Hazak Amawanya Lakwachaza Bahashim Yahweh Okay. Keep strong my faith until the end in the name of Yahweh Shai. Who is Yahweh Shai? Yahweh Shai is the person you ignorantly call Jeebus Krause. Okay, he's a Negro from the tribe of Judah. Hey, little sister, hey, you just walked past with the market feet here. Do you give a shit? Huh? You see what I mean? That's what I'm talking about, man. Two thirds of my people are willingly willing to be left here and mounted by thermonuclear heat. When that shit hits their motherfucking ass, they're gonna wish they had a chance to prepare. They, before they see that, they're going to see the chariots of the Most High picking up his people. Okay? Those that he finger, hand point, and hand chose, hand picked before the foundation of the earth was made. Okay? That's the last thing they're going to see. A minute or two after that, they're going to be left here and melted, man. Remember, the human body is made out of elements. Okay? Bahashim Yahweh Shah Hamashiach Ayan Lakal Laha Kwataza La Allah Laha Marakab Shah Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shah Ha the Wak Shah Ha Rikwayan. I pray to endure to the end to ascend to the chariots of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shah in the midst of the sky. Amen. Let's get to one of these lessons.
right? All righty. Now, getting back to that bank, they're gonna start November the 1st. Okay, on a Friday, they're gonna shut down everybody's money. They're gonna shut down everybody's money. They shutting it down, fuck it. 401k plan, all of it. They wanna try to do that here in America. But they don't have enough soldiers in order to police the people during civil unrest. During civil unrest, they have to enact medical martial law and force the people to take the radio frequency identification microprocessor underneath their skin. And their upper shoulders or their right hand or left. Ain't gonna matter, okay? The people gonna be trying to do whatever they can to feed their kids. It'll be a time of trouble that has been so great as it never was since there was a nation. Like it tells you uh, in the book of Daniel, chapter 12, verse two, verse one. So like it, let's get it. Right, a time of great trouble. Daniel chapter 12, verse one. And at that time shall Michael stand up the great prince was standing for the children of thy people. Right? And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered. How do you know the most high of God's people, Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shah's people from the rest of the Negroes of the world? Quite simply, those that know the name of the Lord. Like it tells you in Joel chapter two, verse 36, or 32, right? Those that know the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Roughly paraphrased, right? Okay. Everyone that shall be found written in the book. What book? The book of life, the book of remembrance, the book of rejoicing, the book of crowning, the book of joy, right? Verse two, and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt, right? So the Most High, when he gets here, he's coming to judge the living and the dead. People are running out of time. The time of great trouble is upon us, man. And I'm trying to do what I can to persuade, but ain't nobody listening. Don't nobody give a shit. All they care about is trying to go get something to eat, but because uh, today is the, uh, the pagan holiday of Mother's Day. That's the day I, I'm out here preaching. But they got my channel shut down, so by the time this video get out, I'm a week, two weeks late on the information. Okay, that I already read. I did a, I did a couple of videos on uh, that Macquarie Bank down in Australia. That's where they're doing uh, the experiment at, as taking people's money from them. You see how, how, how it's going to affect the American citizens here in America. All right. That's what's happening. That's what they're going to do. That's the plan. Okay, shut your money down, take it from you. Okay, and then limit your ability to get it, paper money, by sending you to a fucking ATM. Now, during that time, if it's at an ATM, they can charge you five, ten, twenty dollars just to take your paycheck out of there but then you only get $2,000. You see what I'm saying? And they ain't gonna give you a raise, you can hang it up. They want you to be uh, susceptible to the Universal Basic Income Program, where they give you $2,000 per month. Okay, and force you to live off that at, in a time of hyperinflation. What if gas gets up to $12.50 a fucking gallon because of the war between Iran and Israel? and America going in helping Israel, telling a lie to the face of the people through propaganda and mainstream media, we're not gonna help Israel, but they're secretly sending weapons over there. Okay? You have to understand, Esau Edom is a liar, man. These motherfuckers will lie to your face with a smile. Okay? That's what they do, man. They're the fucking devil that the Bible speaks of. That's who these people are, man. They're the children of wickedness. That's all they know is wickedness and telling a fucking lie. 
Like it tells you in Psalms 58 and 3, the wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. They are estranged from the Most High, meaning they're divorced from God as soon as they come out their mama's home. That's how much the Most High God hates these goddamn devils. But the only reason that they're in control is because the Most High had made a promise to Isaac, Abraham's son, Abraham's, uh, the Most High God's friend. Okay, that he would have the fatness of the earth, the dew of heaven from above, and to live by the sword. Okay, real tough. And that's what's happening. You try to tell the people they don't want to hear it. They think you're telling the fucking law. Now, they're going to start shutting down and taking people's money November the 1st of this year. That's crazy. So, Thanksgiving, Christmas, fuck that. You're done. Bye. It's over. How you going to buy it? Huh? You done got so caught up in tradition, what you going to do without no money? Right? You cut down, like it tells you in Jeremiah, chapter 10, verse 2, you cut down a goddamn tree and put it up in your living room. Right? That's like an obelisk or uh, an oblation to Baal. Baal Peor, a.k.a. Serapis Christus, a.k.a. Jesus Christ. They're all the same guy. All they did over the centuries is they changed his fucking name. It's the same dude. We did the research. We showed it to you to your fucking face. You think we're telling you a lie. Okay? Daniel chapter 12, verse 4. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Right? Knowledge has been increased. You got technology where we can put these video epistles out on the internet. Right? To try to get you ass to wake up. To make you think. Okay? Wondering why you get up at 3, 30, 4 o'clock in the fucking morning. Can't figure out why. Out of a, out of a, a sound sleep. You wide awake now. Boom. What happened? Can't go back to sleep. Worry. Something's going to go wrong, but you can't put your finger on it. Okay. Right? Okay. And and one said to the man clothed in linen which was upon the waters of the river. How long shall it be to the end of these wonders? And I heard the man clothed in linen, which is upon the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven, and swear by him that liveth forever, that it shall be for time, times, and a half, when he has, shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people. Right? So those, the holy people that have been scattered are gonna receive power spiritual power from on high okay they had a man an african back in the 60s by the name of simon toku okay who was a uh, so-called african but actually his bloodline went back to the israelites more than likely from the tribe of judah the way they described the man they cut him up cut him into pieces and he reconstituted himself back in the, in the offices of washington dc and told them to their faces that Clearly, you don't want me to be here, okay? So I'm gonna leave, right? But the next time you see me, there's gonna be 144,000 of righteous men that are gonna receive the same power, if not more power than me, and you will not be able to stop them, okay? These prekker are scared to fucking death of us, okay? Because they know that we're gonna destroy them with spiritual power. All these movies that you got about Marvel superheroes, the Marvel Universe, DC Universe, that shit, that's because they're afraid that that 144,000 is gonna show up, man. During the time of Jacob's trouble, the time of great trouble that Daniel the prophet talked about, that's when we're gonna receive these powers, man. Very soon. Okay, be able to fly, be invulnerable, be able to run at super speed, pass through solid objects, 
levitate solid objects with the power of the mind, put people to death with the power of the mind, freeze people in place with the power of the mind, telekinesis, pyrokinesis, terakinesis, parakinesis, hydrokinesis. They put it in that movie, The Last Airbender. These people are scared to fucking death of us, man. But ain't nothing they can do about it. That's the reason why we stand boldly before the face of those that have afflicted us that make no account of our labors. Like it tells you in the Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 1. Okay? Second Ezra, chapter uh, 2, verse 42. Uh, not 42, but 44. Says that we're going, he's going to commend us. Ezra is going to commend us for standing so stiffly for the name of the Lord. Okay? Because they're going to ban and outlaw the name of Yahweh and of the name of Yahweh Shai. I guarantee it. Okay? They're going to ban the Bible. That's what they're trying to do now. These are the last days of preaching on street corners, man. This is it. Okay? And the people think you're telling them a lie. They think you're insane. You know, I try to do what I can. Explain to the people, but they, they ain't getting it. Right? Check this out. Hosea chapter 1, verse 10. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that the place where it was said unto them, ye are not my people, there it shall be said unto them, ye are the sons of the living God, Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shad. Right? And that's what's happening right today. Right? They're talking about Hebrew Israelites all the time. Okay? Then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel those remnant that have been elected to receive spiritual power in these last days shall be gathered together and appoint themselves one head, right? Great millstone. And they shall come up out of the land, right? Those that know the name of the Lord shall be delivered, right? For great shall be the day of Jezreel. Amen. Daniel 12 and 3, and they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that, they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. Right? So that's what we're trying to do is to persuade knowing the terror of the Lord. Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shah is coming out here to exterminate a lot of people, man. And you ain't going to get no mercy from God when he get here, I'm telling you. It's time to repent. Repentance, 2nd Ezra chapter... Hold on, man. I think I might. Uh, let me see. Oh, I, I might. I might know where where my apocrypha is. Hold on. I'll be right back. Okay, sorry about that. I didn't mean that. I, yep, I found it. It was in the trunk. <laughs> what the hell? Okay, where was I at? Okay, second as chapter two. Verse 42, right? I, Ezra, saw upon the Mount Sion a great people whom I could not number. And they all praise the Lord with songs. It says the same thing in Revelation chapter 12, verse uh, chapter 7, verse 9, about the great multitude, right? This is the same people. And they all praise the Lord with song. Okay, now the song is called Allah Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. 
call all Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Barakatha Yahweh, Barakatha Yahweh Shai. Right? Blessings to Yahweh, blessings to Yahweh Shai. Blessings be to Yahweh by Hashem in the name of Yahweh Shai. Right? Okay, that's the new song. Because the Most High has revealed his name unto those individuals that have accepted what his name is. The true paleo ancient Hebrew name of the Most High and His Son. It tells you, it challenges you uh, to know what the, the name of the Father and the name of the Son is in Proverbs chapter 30, verse 4, which is uh, Amawan Abad's favorite biblical scripture. Okay, well, one of them, but I'm sure that's one of the ones at the top. Okay, and that's what we're trying to fully persuade you. That's the Father's name, and that's what you should be trying to learn is the Father's name and how to repent. Okay, that's what we're out here for, man. We ain't out here uh, for our help. I, I'm sure I got some other better shit I could be doing today, but I chose to do what I could, do my job, and persuade you to repent, doing the best I can. Because you're out of time, man. When the central banks shut down your money, then you will know that a prophet has been among you. Like it tells you in Ezekiel chapter 30, uh, 31, verse 33. Oh, you'll know it then, guaranteed. Because we told you before this shit happened, you ain't gonna be able to buy no goddamn cigarettes. Right? Blunks, Mac Malls, all that other bullshit over here at the fucking taco shop, beer shop, smoke shop. You ain't gonna be able to buy none of that shit over there. Okay? Without taking the mark of the beast. Okay? That's just that simple. And the people don't understand it. I tell them what the mark of the beast is. It's a radio frequency identification chip. You take that fucking chip, you're fucked. The son of the most high gonna burn your ass the fuck up. Ain't nothing you can do about it. Nothing. Okay? Trying to feed your fucking face. All you had to do at the time it was for you to repent was to keep his commandments. Fear God and keep his commandments. That's all you have to do. Our people don't, they, they, they go to church and believe that the law done away with. You can do whatever the fuck you want to do, okay? Which is a lie, man. That lie was taught to you by the precept of men. It's a lie. And we try to tell you, you don't want to hear it. You see? So I come out here and try to fully persuade the people with all these pictures. I got all these pictures out here, man. I ain't fucking around, okay? I got lots of pictures out here. All the way around the street corner. The whole thing, showing people what the fuck's going on. If they, they, they're interested, they can come up here reading about themselves. You see what I'm saying? But they don't want to. They don't want to, man. They'd rather drive by and look at it like, uh, like I'm a monkey in a fucking cage. Okay? Real talk, man. I'm the monkey in the cage. Oh, look at the pretty monkey. Okay? Oh, look out. He's going to throw some dirt at you. Right? That's how these motherfuckers look at me, man. Okay? Where does it say that at? Hold on. Let's get it. Then I'll get back to second hand. So, you know, these people aren't second man. If I had an opportunity to repent, if somebody was telling me this is the end of the fucking world, you know, I'm going to try to find out what I need to do to be saved. These ignorants, they ain't got a fucking clue, man. They go to church, give twenty dollars to a fucking dude in a suit, and think they're gonna be saved. The Most High told him to repent, fear him, and keep his commandments. Find out the name of the Father and the Son. It ain't no goddamn Yahweh. Yahweh. It ain't no Yahushua or Yeshua, whatever the fuck his name is. That's Greek. The Son of God is a Hebrew. There's a difference between Greeks and Hebrews, okay? Just like there's a difference between a goddamn white man and a fucking black man. Day and night, understand? And we try to tell the people they don't get it. Where was that at? Uh, what is it, First Corinthians? First Corinthians, uh, uh, chapter three, verse 13. Every man's work shall be made manifest, but the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. 
If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. And so that's why we're out here. We're out here trying to persuade. We're out here trying to persuade the people to repent while at the same time trying to go into the vineyard. Somebody done died of a heart attack and had a goddamn car break up on 21st Street somewhere. You know? It's Sunday. You know? Whatever. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6, uh, 14. If any man's work abide which he has built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. Right? So that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to receive the reward that was that Yahweh said promised that he would give to us. Where we were going to the vineyard for a penny. We're the last ones to come in, to go into the vineyard, right? So the vineyard is the world, the sea, okay? And we're out here trying to, on the, the, grape, the vine, the grapes of the vine, trying to find a cluster of grapes and pick the right grapes from the rotten ones. That's all we're trying to do, okay? That to, in order to receive that penny, that reward, which is a crown of rejoicing. Okay? A crown of joy. The crown of life. Like Yahweh Shai told us we would have in Revelation chapter 2, verse 11. Right? If any man's work shall be burnt, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. See, we're trying to save the people on this side, though. Okay? Now, if they're left here and melted, they'll be saved when they come back in the reincarnation through the nutsack of the children of Israel that are saved here in these last days. Okay? Those are the only people that are going to be saved. Okay, now if you get left here and melted on this side because you love Esau more than you love the Most High God, yeah, you're going to be left here and burnt. You're going to suffer loss. You're going to lose your eternal salvation. Okay, where you could have helped build the, the temple of the Lord, which is the kingdom of heaven on earth. You had an opportunity to build it, to help build it, to enslave the Edomite devils. But by the time you come out of the nut sack, out of your mama's womb on the other side, you'll never have seen a white man. You'll be asking us, why, wow, Papa, you mean to tell me that these animals ruled over you? Yep, that's right, son. Okay? That's where the two-thirds are gonna lie, as the little children come in after. You'll be burnt and suffer loss. The same must know it after death by pain. Knowing also that these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in all holy conversation and, dark, and, and godliness? Right? Second Peter chapter 3. Well, what was it? Verse 10? Let's get it. Right? 2 Peter 3 and 10, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. So you're never, you're never going to see it coming. You're never going to see it coming. The day of the Lord, when he get here, it's going to be too late. You're going to be doing whatever the fuck you said he said you was doing. Right? Like it tells you in Matthew chapter 24, Luke chapter 21, Mark 13. Okay? You're going to be doing whatever it is that you would like to do it. When he gets here, he's going to catch you with your hands in the cookie jar. He's going to catch you with your pants down. He's going to catch you doing something you ain't had no business doing. In the, he in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. 
and the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burnt up. See what I mean? You'll be burned up and suffer loss. But that man's soul will be saved. Why? Because you'll come through as one of the children of the elect that have been predestinated to be saved in the first place. All we're trying to do is say key words in the biblical scriptures and give you the proper breakdown and the hopes that it would persuade you to become curious, to think about it. Right? To consider. Because you've heard it all before, but you ain't never heard it preached like this. Okay? That gives you a proper breakdown by words and definitions of the words in the Bible. What they mean, instead of jumping to your own conclusions. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of Yahweh, where in the heavens being on fire, where in the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Remember, everything in the periodic table in America and the world are made out of elements. Okay? It's that simple. You took one of the elements, an atom out of one of the elements, and you split it and made an atomic explosion with great fervent heat and burn up everything. Now you took a hydrogen atom and split that. Now you can burn it up twice as fast with twice as a bigger space, right? And cause twice as much damage, killing twice as many people. See? So that's what we try to do, man. They're trying to pass a wave of legislation to protect the professional victim, right? With this anti-Semitic bill that these goddamn devils are trying to push. It don't make no sense. Jacob and Esau, the white man and the black man, both are Semitic. We both come out of the bloodline of Shem through Abraham's seed. How the fuck can you call me anti-Semitic? How can you say anything that I say is anti-Semitic? That's like denying oneself. That's as bad as transhumanism. Denying the fact that you're a man and decide to put a dress on. What the hell? God says that there's a curse for you for that. It's an abomination before his face. Deuteronomy 22 and 5. A man, a woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment, for both are an abomination before the Lord. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5. What did they push here in Babylon the Great? America. Same-sex marriage. Alphabet community madness. Rainbow coalition. Right? That's atheism. Because that goes directly against the Most High God. Right? Let's get it. Immunity is a noun. Exemption from certain general, uh, 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 from certain generally applicable requirements of law or from certain liabilities granted to special groups of people to facilitate the performance of their public functions. Fair use, this video is for educational purposes only. Understand? Freedom exemption from any charge, duty, or obligation, office, tax, penalty, or imposition. A particular privilege. What type of particular privilege? White privilege, okay? I can't get to do whatever the fuck you want to do, but you can't. And it's not up for debate or to be criticized. That's the reason why they're pushing this anti-Semitic bill. 
to make the Bible illegal, to make preaching in public illegal. Okay? These devils must be stopped, man. Okay? Yahweh Shah, if you get a hold of this video, man, you need to do something quick, a little faster, because these devils, okay, they're going to try to get a lot of us, man. They're going to try to delete a lot of us. I mean, it's nothing for us to fear. You're going to wake us back up. I get it. But, I mean, it's our flesh that's telling you. Okay? It's the fear of our flesh. You had the same thing jumping off in the bottom, uh, uh, in the Garden of Gethsemane. When you asked the Most High, your father, which is our father too, Yahweh, asked him to take the cup of his indignation away from you. Remember that? Come on, man. I don't blame you. I don't want this shit either. But we got to do what we got to do, right? We got to obey the Most High to the doom, right? That's why you told us that we should endure to the end, right? The same of us shall be saved. Right? We've got to endure to the end. Right? Let's get uh, Psalms 73. Oh, that's right. I'm supposed to get back to uh, Second Ezra's, right? I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> I got so many biblical scriptures that I got broke down on my lesson, you know, because I take notes, like I was told to do by Elder Yashua and Ba down in Dallas. <clears throat> he said, take notes. I mean, uh, uh, and uh, uh, Elder Benatti side Bob down in South Carolina, and Brother Yawana, our Brother Yawan, he said, take notes, take notes, I'm taking them, right? Now I'm making lessons, I'm amazing. I mean, I went from taking notes to making my own lessons. <laughs> I'm like, wow, uh-uh, okay? But anyway, 2nd Ezra chapter two, verse 42. I, Ezra, saw upon the Mount Zion a great people who I could not number. And they all praise the Lord with songs. Tells you the same thing in Revelation chapter 7, verse 9, about the great multitude, right? Okay. And in the midst of them, there was a young man of a high stature, taller than all the rest. And upon every one of their heads, he set crowns and was more exalted, which I marveled at greatly. So he was taller and he was better, uh, more elegantly and glamorously dressed than everybody else, right? So there was no way you could miss him. The dream I had was he was as tall as one of these white folks out here, okay? Okay, and he was setting crowns on people's head. But when I saw him, I couldn't get to him to go rush and give him a hug or anything like that. I was held back. So clearly I must have lost my life on this side. Because when I thought back uh, on the dream I had uh, last year, when I had that dream, I had to be, the, 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 that person that was standing in front of me was the attachment of umbilical cord to uh, uh, the, in, the innards of her stomach. That's the reason why I couldn't get past it. Because of, uh, of, of, of the little, uh, the little uh, ball of uh, uh, whatever, I forget the name of it, placenta, that was in my way. I couldn't see, I could see the Lord, and I was jumping for joy, and I seen him, but I couldn't get to him, you know? But I did see people coming out from behind me, dressed in all kinds of different manners, running to the Lord, praising his Musal. I remember that, so I may not make it on this side, okay? I might have to come back on the other side in the, in the womb of one of the, one of the women, of the righteous, you know? I, I'm hoping I don't have to do that because I'm doing the best I can to stand stiffly for the name of the Lord so this way I can be counted worthy to receive a crown of honor and a crown of life from Yahweh and Mashiach's hand. That's what I'm hoping for. I can't, I can't do nothing else, man. Okay. Hell, they already got me down on, uh, on the extermination list, probably. Right? Anyway. Second Ezra chapter two, verse 44. So I asked the angel and said, sir, what are these? In other words, who are these people? Where they come from, right? He answered and said unto me, these be they that have put off the mortal clothing, right? Where mortality shall put on 
immortality. Corruption shall put on incorruption. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 52 through 55. Right? And put on the immortal and have confessed the name of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Right? The creator of the heavens, the earth, the sea, all that is there in the foundation of water. That's the name of the Father, Yahweh. The name of his son is Yahweh Shai. It is not no fucking Jesus Christ. That is a lie. That was set up by Esau Edom to persuade the children of Israel that he had under his sway as slaves and captives oppressed in a country that was stolen from the indigenous population of people that were also Israelites. They put their face up. No other race of people have done that. Okay? That's how bold and proud these Edomite devils are, man. Now are they crowned and received palms. Then I said unto the angel, what young person is it that crowneth them and giveth them palms in their hands? So he answered me and said unto me, it is the son of God, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. The son of God, his name is Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, which means he is salvation, right? He is the deliverer, right? whom they have confessed in the world. Then began I to greatly commend them that stood so stiffly for the name of Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shai, right? So that's what's going on, man. Let's go to uh, Psalms 73. Psalm 73, verse 3. For I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. Right? That's the reason why two-thirds of our people are going to lose their life during the time of great, great tribulation, the time of Jacob's trouble, the great trouble foretold in the book of Daniel 12 and 1. Right? Because they're envious at the prosperity of the wicked white man can put a chip in his hand and buy and sell and I gotta sit off on the wayside I ain't got no job can't feed my family broke as fuck broke as a joke and I ain't got no money so how can I participate in their caste of the society okay that's the, worshiping the image of the beast that's how two-thirds of our people are gonna be cut off and die on this side right because they have no faith which is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen like it tells you in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 right Psalms 73 verse 4 for there are no bands in their death but their strength is firm how is the uh, how firm is the strength of Esau Edom America is the um, United is the, uh, the military complex of these Edomite devils Okay, every, ba every man, woman, and child in America got at least five guns. Okay, that's the reason why they tried to do away with the gun law. Do away with conceal and carry. Right? To force more compliance uh, and acceptance of the government. To force you and bottleneck your decisions and force your back against the wall. Where you forced to where you can't make a nothing, a nothing but a bad decision, which will cost you your eternal salvation. These people don't care. They believe that Jesus Christ punk bitches is the son of God. Blonde haired, long haired, homosexual faggot. The gay boyfriend of Leonardo da Vinci. Right? Sister Ray Borgia. They believe he's the son of God. Right? They don't they can't their minds can't fathom that the son of God is a Negro. That's the reason why two-thirds of our people are going to be exterminated. Psalms 
Psalm 73, verse 5. They are not in trouble as other men. Neither are they plagued like other men, right? Plagued with oppression, right? Struggle to pay your bills every week, right? Every month, right? Ain't getting enough money from the job, right? Hyperinflation jumping off. Goddamn gallon of milk is $8, right? Are you sure it's real milk, right? See, that's what I'm talking about. Therefore, pride compasses them about as a chain. Violence covered them as a garment. That's every other white dude. That's goddamn Joe Sixpack. He got a gun and a beer in his hand. Okay, and got a Bible in his back pocket. Pocket Bible. Worship my God or I'm gonna kill you. They did that to the Chinese, right? They did that to the Japanese, right? They did that to the indigenous population of people that were here who were dark-skinned race of people, right? But, uh, right? I mean, that's what they've done, man. The tribe of Gad, the tribe of, uh, of Reuben, and the half-tribe of Manasseh. Those are the individuals that were over here. North, South, and Central America. Gad, Reuben, Manasseh. Through the transatlantic slave trade, they turned everybody around and switched everybody's uh, landmark. Nobody knows where they come from anymore. That all they believe in is the traditional bullshit that was forced down their throat during their captivity, during their enslavement when Esau Edom first got here. You see what I'm saying? Psalm 73, verse 7. Their eyes stand out with fatness. How does that work? Blue eyes. Green eyes, hazel eyes, gray eyes. They stare at you like they want to kill you all the goddamn time and they don't mean no harm, maybe. You know, they stand out with fatness. Like, okay, dude, make you stand out, it's okay. Be, uh, uh, be the Uncle Tom, skippity, skippity, skip, for fear he might come in there and blow your brains out for nothing talking about I fear for my life and walk off on a murder charge that's what these devils do the law is set up for their benefit not for ours right they're still trying to get back at us behind a birthright the birthright that they sold to us they sold it we didn't steal a fucking thing the birthright and the blessing go together it was already stated in the in the ethereal realm where the most high dwells Okay, before Jacob and Esau were ever born. It tells you that in Genesis chapter 25. It tells you again in Romans chapter 8. What the fuck? Okay. Their eyes stand out with fatness. They have more than heart could wish. Right? They got money. They got gold. They got silver, they got mansions, they got swimming pools, they got movie stars, they got mainstream media propaganda, they got it all, fuck it. They got the most expensive cars ever made. Over there in the Arab nations, they got Lamborghinis plated in gold. Motherfuckers got a fucking PlayStation 5 plated in gold. Right? I mean, come on, man. They are corrupt. They speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak loftily. Who does this? Esau Edom, white privilege, white supremacy, punk shit, right? That's what they believe in, okay? And if you don't like it, now they got an anti-S anti law, okay, that they want to pass into a law to ban the Bible. So you can't criticize the sons of bitches. Right? Fair use, fair 
use disclaimer, this video is for educational purposes only. Okay? They set their mouth against the heavens and their tongue walking through the earth. I'm proud to be an American. I can do whatever I want to do. I'm a white man, right? That's the evil of wickedness is these fucking devils, man. Okay, white privilege and white supremacy. They can come over and shoot my ass and say that they were threatened. I ain't did nothing wrong. But preach out of a Bible. I don't have any weapons. But that's what they'll do, man. They're wicked. Two thirds of our people are wicked just like them. Yes, a boss. Yes, a master type shit. Then you wonder why we get mad all the time. You know, our own people are gonna turn us in. Right? Look at Yahweh Shine. Peter turned him in. The rock. And upon this rock, he shall build his church, right? But Peter turned him in. All the apostles turned it back on him and ran for their lives. Right? Our families are going to do the same thing. It tells you in the book of Luke, let's get it. I'm like, damn, really? Wow. Fuck it, I'll go to uh, Mark chapter 13. Right? 13 verse 6. For many shall come in my name saying, I am a Mashiach, and shall deceive many. You got that with I U I C uh that uh that body that one body bag of Satan down in Dallas. Uh you got that ridiculous asshole that, that brags about eating pork, shrimp, and unclean food in the name of the sun, right? You got all of these and these false prophets and, and apostles coming out of the, out of the fucking woodwork now. Everybody that took the bag. Right? Mark chapter 12, verse 38. And he said unto them in his doctrine, beware of the scribes which love to go in long clothing. Who do you know that loves to go running around in long clothing? I-U-I-C with them purple garments walking around here around the motherfucking earth you know, like they Power Rangers right? I-S-U-B-K they got Power Rangers on the brain right? <laughs> you know beware of the scribes which love to go in long clothing and love salutations in the marketplaces and the chief seats in the synagogues and in the uppermost rooms at feasts, right? Which devour widows' houses and for a pretense make long prayer. These shall receive the greater damnation, right? For many shall come in my name saying, I am a Mashiach and shall deceive many. Understand? And we shall hear of wars and rumors of wars be ye not troubled, for such things must needs be, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. That's happening right now. It's all over the fucking news. Benjamin, nothing not a Jew. He knows that he's going to be brought up on war crimes of, of, of G O side, right? He knows that. Since he knows that, okay. He's, he needs to push this war against Hamas that are no longer there. They already threw in the, the, the white flag. He's he, he just going and killing people now. There's nobody in Rafa but, but women and children. Okay? See, that's how you know. That's how you know who they are. Uh, who Amalek is because it tells you that Amalek did the same fucking thing to us, the Israelites, when we went around their mountain of Mount Seir 
to get to the promised land in the desert with Moses. It tells you that in Deuteronomy 25 and 17. Remember what Amalek did unto thee by the way when he had struck the hindermost hind of you. Right? Let's get it. That's how you know who Amalek is. They're doing the exact same thing. Like it tells you in Psalms 55 and 19, the Lord shall afflict them, he that abideth the mold, say long, because they have no changes, therefore they fear not God. Right? Let's get it right quick. Wow, turn right to it. Deuteronomy chapter 25, verse 17. Remember what Amalek did unto thee by the way when ye were come forth out of Egypt. How he met thee by the way and smote the hindmost of thee, even all that were feeble behind thee. They're doing the same goddamn thing in Rapha. Right now. That's how you know who Amalek is. We've been telling you who Amalek is for years. That they're frauds and that they're imposters. And that they call themselves the JEWs and are not but do lie. And you don't believe it. And then when we show you in the Bible where it's at, they come up with an unrighteous law and a decree to outlaw the Bible that points out who the fuck they are. Okay. When thou wast faint and weary, and he feared not God. Psalms 55 and 19. The Lord, the Lord shall afflict them he that abideth of old, say law, because they have no changes. Therefore, they fear not God. They don't fear God. They think they are God. They have a goddamn God complex. They set their face up and pretend to be God on earth. They set up the fucking Pope, another Amalekite, Edomite, white man. Right? How come they ain't never had a black Pope? What's up with that shit? Huh? White privilege, white supremacy. And they say we preach hate. What the fuck? I'm just pointing out the obvious. And I'm applying Bible scripture. That's not hate. That's study to show thyself approved. That's seeking yourself out of the book of the Lord and read. That's what it is. Goddamn Edomites can't handle it. They can't handle the truth. Okay? A truth has become a terror unto the wicked. Right? Deuteronomy 25 verse 19 Therefore it shall be when the Lord thy God hath given thee rest from all thy enemies round about in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance to possess it that thou shalt blot out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven thou shalt not forget it. Right? Benjamin Netanyahu goes back and tells the entire world a lie saying that Hamas and the Palestinians are Amalek which justifies that going in using uh, the G word on side on the Palestinians. Don't get me wrong. I don't give a shit about the Palestinians and I goddamn sure don't give a shit about the Israelis. Okay, because neither one of them are God's people. Now, you have God's people that have been intermingled within them that are Israelites whose bloodlines go back to Israel of the 12 tribes, okay? Like it tells you in uh, Jeremiah chapter 12, verse nine, my inheritance has become unto me as, as a speckled bird. So our people are not all dark skinned anymore. We come in all shapes and sizes and skin color, skin tone. You wanna call it, I call it that, okay? But the Most High God, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah, has made it known who are his people here in these last days. Another reason why they wanted to ban the Bible. Fair use, fair use, this video, this video, okay, is for educational purposes only. Right? You see what I mean?
right? Joel chapter 2. Verse 1. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, the memorial of the remnant of Israel, and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. Right? And that's what we're trying to do is tell the people that it's near at hand. Okay. A day of darkness and of gloominess. A day of clouds and thick darkness as the morning spread upon the mountains a great people and a strong there hath not been ever the like neither shall there be any more after it even to the years of many generations right that's talking about the thermonuclear missiles that are going to come here and pelt this place and melt everything right the call to repentance Joel chapter 2 verse 12 Therefore also now saith the Lord Turn ye even to me with, Even with all your heart And with fasting And with weeping and mourning And rent your heart and not your garments And turn unto the Lord your God For he is gracious and merciful Slow to anger And of great kindness And repenteth him of the evil Right? Same thing. What is that? Uh, tells you the same thing in Jeremiah. Chapter 3, verse 12. Go and proclaim these words toward the north and say, Return thou backsliding Israel, saith the Lord, and I will not cause mine anger to fall upon you, for I am merciful, saith the Lord. Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh, Shah and I will not keep anger forever, right? Only acknowledge thy iniquity that thou hast transgressed against the Lord thy God and hast scattered thy ways to the strangers under every green tree. And ye have not obeyed my voice, saith the Lord. Turn, O backsliding children, saith the Lord. For I am married unto you, and I will take you one of a city and two of a family, and I will bring you unto Zion. And I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. So that's what the Most High has done. Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealed the secrets unto his servants, the prophets. One last time, hath the Most High Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai brought out the prophets right before the destruction of any kingdom he brings the prophets to prophesy the downfall and to bring our people that have been scattered that live among these heathen nations to come out from amongst them and repent every single time this entire book is about it this is why it's our history book we find out the name of the Lord we call upon his name he comes, he moves us out of the way, and destroys that kingdom. Right? It is a recurring narrative of the Bible. That's how much the Most High, Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai loves his people. He chose one people. He did not choose every fucking body. Okay? God does not love everybody. That is a lie, man. That has been set up by the Christian church. Now, let's get back over here to, where was I at? Mark 13. Right? Jacob's trouble. The end of the world. The day of darkness. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am a Mashiach. Mark 13, verse 6 and shall deceive many. And when ye shall hear wars and rumors of wars, be ye not troubled, for such things must needs be, but the end shall not be. So I give, but the end shall not be yet. Look, 
got an earphones in her ear. I ain't trying to hear it. Hey God, man. Why? What is the most high God done for these people other than wake them up in the fucking morning? They want to tat their face, tat their body, and think they're about something. If you was about something, why the fuck are you walking? I don't understand it. Where's your car at? You about something? You see what I mean? Our people are just completely confused. They're confounded, man. They don't know what to do. They don't believe anymore. Our people have no faith. They don't have that power anymore. I don't believe that that's in them. But I'm gonna do what I have to do and come out here and stand boldly before the face of these goddamn oppressive devils and try to tell them to their face that their end is near. Nearer than when they believed. That's the reason why they're pushing the radio frequency identification microprocessor, the MOTB, that micro C hip, to be implanted underneath the skin for you to buy and sell in their cashless fucking society. The image that they set up, right? The image of convenience. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be earthquakes in diverse places, and there shall be famines and troubles. These are the beginnings of sorrows. See, that shit's been jumping off since 2018. Okay? Earthquakes, tornadoes, right? All kinds of shit. Typhoons, hurricanes, uh, volcanic eruptions, right? But take heed to yourselves, for they shall deliver you up to councils. And in the synagogues ye shall be beaten, and ye shall be brought before rulers and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them. Okay? So, you brothers out there, hold your head up when these sons of bitches come to your job and give you the walk of shame in front of all of your peers. Because when they give you that walk of shame, you can't get your job back. It's over. Your labors are done. Okay? You can accept that. Just accept it, man. The only way you're going to get out of custody of these devils is that if you participate in a cast of society. And the only way you can access central bank digital currency through universal basic income, because with that walk of shame, you can't get your job back. So that makes you immediately a subsidiary, a subservient, to the universal basic income program of $2,000 to $6,000 a month. And the only way you can access that is with the microprocessor, the size of a grain of rice underneath your skin. Okay? So remember that. That's it for you. When they come for you at your job or if they come for you at your home, that's it. You're done. Okay? Yahweh Shah said in red letter in the book of Mark 13, but take heed to yourselves, for they shall deliver you up. Who are they? Your friends and family, your co-workers, your boss, okay? They shall deliver you up to councils, and in the synagogues you shall be beaten, and you shall be brought before rulers and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them. And the gospel must first be published amongst all nations before this happens, right? Okay? Now we're using these video epistles to send this word in all languages to all countries. Okay? Mark verse th uh, chapter 13, verse 11. But when they shall lead you and deliver you up, take no thought beforehand what ye shall speak, neither do ye premeditate, but whatsoever shall be given you in that hour that speak ye. It is not ye that speak, but the Holy Ghost, right? Or the Holy Spirit. Verse 12. Now brother shall betray brother to death, and the father the son. And children shall rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death. That's where we're at on the biblical timeline. We're almost home, okay? The only way to get to heaven is to be changed from mortal to immortality. Where the Lord and uh, the angel 
shall say they have put off the mortal clothing and put on the immortal. Now are they crowned and received palms. Right? Where mortality shall be changed into another meaning. It tells you that in 2 Ezra chapter 6, verse 25, I think, ain't it? Let's get it right quick. 2 Ezra chapter 6. Verse 24, at that time shall friends fight one against another like enemies, and the earth shall stand in fear with those that dwell therein. The springs of the fountain shall stand still, and in three hours they shall not run. So it's going to be illegal for you to go fishing at that time to feed your family, because under martial law, you will be banned from going go fishing. You will be banned from going to go hunting because they're going to take your weapons from you. Okay, your hunting weapons. Crossbow. Bow and arrow. Right? They're going to take everything from you. Okay? They want to force dependence on the government. Right? And in three hours they shall not run. During this time of civil unrest, okay, martial law, during that same time, you're not going to be able to buy and sell if you don't participate in that cashless society that they've set up. They're going to shut out the power grid. Once they shut off the power grid, ain't no lights, gas, trash, or water. That's the reason why they took your water system up under your house. They hooked it up to the power grid. That way they could just flip a fucking switch and everything is shut off. You see what I'm saying? You can't even boil water. Whosoever remaineth from all these that I have told thee shall escape and see the semi salvation and the end of your world, right? That are the elect of the house of Israel, right? That the Most High had handpicked before the foundations of the world were created, right? Whosoever remaineth from all these that I have told thee shall escape and see my salvation and the end of your world. And the men that are received shall see it who have not tasted death from their birth and the heart of the inhabitants shall be changed and turned into another meaning. Right? Mortal shall put off the mortal clothing and put on the immortal. Mortal mortality shall put on immortality. Corruption shall put on incorruption. Then shall the saying come to pass that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Right? For the sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to the blessing of the propitiation blood of Yahweh Shah Hamashiach that shed his blood on the tree, right? That we have an unction from the Holy One, right? Of Israel, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Okay? Where we have great and abundant mercy coming towards us. Okay? Yep, it's Sunday after church. All the demons that came out. Let's go back to Mark. Mark 13, verse 12. No, verse 13. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that shall endure unto the end the same shall be saved. So that's the reason why we try to persuade men because we know that the dark days are right in front of us. 
Like I told you, they're gonna give us the walk of shame and destroy our job and destroy who we are and destroy our character, defamation of character, right then. As upstanding citizens of society by demeaning us and calling us a domestic uh, T-E-R-R-O-R-I-S-T's, right? Right? That's what the fuck they're gonna do. You know, these fucking devils. In order to pass this unrighteous law and decree, Banning the word of, of God. Banning the word of heaven. You can't read it no more. They'll be able to kick your fucking door in and, and see if you got one. If you got one, you're immediately subject to uh, summary execution. Right? Donald Trump came in on the basis that he wants to make America great again Bibles. Right? He want to sell make America great again Bibles. What kind of shit is that? The Freemason Bible does the same thing. It's the same thing as the Bible I got in my hand. Ain't nothing changed. All they did was put a cover on it. <laughs> I mean, these people are fucking insane, man. You hear me? But when ye shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing where it ought not, right? Those that say that they are the JEWs and are not, but do lie, right? Look, you got people out here talking shit on the Holy Spirit, right? And on the teachers that teach the, the, the true doctrine of the Bible, I'll break it down properly. Them Preckerwoods at church, they ain't gonna break it down properly. They just want your money. They don't give a shit where you live. They don't care if you're going to die. You're gonna be destroyed and left here and melted by thermonuclear destruction? What do you think World War III is all about? It's time to repent, laugh and giggle until your ass get left here and melted. Okay? Go buy you some fucking weed. Get high. Enjoy yourself until it's time for your ass to die off. Cause Esau Edom is coming to put your punk ass in a FEMA camp and cut your fucking head off. Just because you're black, you fucking idiot. But I can't tell you that because it's wrong. See, that's the reason why they want to try to pass this unrighteous law and decree, call it anti-Semitic. You can't tell a Pickerwood that he's uh, an Edomite. He's an Amalekite. He's the people that God hates. God hates Esau. It's a fact. I just read it at the beginning of the video. It's true, God hates Esau. He does not love everybody. All nations cannot be saved. It is a lie. God chose one people. He chose one river. He chose one flower. Okay? He chose one sheep. What's wrong with you people? When somebody tell you the truth, you can't handle it. Amos chapter 8. Verse 11. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord Yahweh. I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. Right? If they pass this anti-Semitic bill, you can't go to church. It's illegal to go to church. It's illegal to attend a synagogue. What you gonna do then? Your Bible will be outlawed. What you gonna do? And they shall wander from sea to sea and from the north, even to the east. They shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord and shall not find it. How? Where? Where are you gonna look? The men that have been teaching you the truth out on street corners every week, every day, putting out videos on the mainstream media, 
all over the earth telling you the truth to your face in the name of Yahweh and in the name of Yahweh Shai. They've already been incarcerated, put in FEMA camps, been put to death. Who's going to tell you the truth? A sellout that tells you that the market of beasts is a white woman, that tell you the market of beasts is sin, that tell you the market of beasts is eating pork. What kind of shit is that? You can't take a pork chop into a store and buy a loaf of bread. They will kick you out of their store or call the police and say you, we have an, a vagrant or a lunatic. Come get him. You can't take a white woman in a grocery store during the time of Jacob's trouble and buy food and say this woman is the mark of the beast. Will you take her and trade for groceries? They're going to laugh you to scorn and kick your ass out of the grocery store. Okay? So if you believe that bullshit, I've got some farmland in Alaska, I'll sell you three cents on a dollar. Okay? We try to tell you the truth to your face, you can't handle it. Like I said before, the mark of the beast, RFID chip, microchip, subcutaneous processor, the size of a grain of rice, is to be implanted underneath your skin in order to participate in a cashless society. And we tell you the truth, you can't handle it. Oh, no, it ain't. It's a lie. You don't know what you're talking about. Until it happens, then what? You can't find us in order to verify it. What you gonna do? Revelation chapter 2 Can't say verse 9 because that would be uh, the anti-S word that they came up with that they don't have a definitive definition for They don't have a definitive explanation as to what the definition of the word that they came up with anti estimate right? Okay, that word antipathetic. Okay, that's the word they came up with, antipathetic. Okay, it's pathetic. They gotta continue to push a lie when everybody knows who they are, right? But now they say it's anti-pathetic. Revelation chapter two, verse 10. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. Right? Now we all know Satan is a spiritual entity. Satan can't throw you into prison. Who owns all the prisons? Esau, Edom, the so-called white man, the devil the Bible speaks of. The devil owns all the prisons, FEMA camps, detention facilities, county jail, federal institutions, insane asylums. Okay? Esau owns that shit. He is the devil. He is the living embodiment of satanic power on earth. Right? Using his white privilege and white supremacy. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. For behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. For there ye may be tried. Right? How are you going to be tried in jail? They're going to beat you, punch you, maybe cut your rod off. Cut your, uh, pull your fingernails out, right? Cut your eyelids off and force you to watch something that was that wasn't meant for human eyes, right? Okay, these devils are gonna have uh, all precedence over you to do whatever they want to you, right? But the Lord said, "Fear not, for I am with thee," right? 
he shall have tribulation 10 days. Now that 10 days period of time is just a period of time that you're gonna be in that prison, okay? It could be longer than 10 days, it could be shorter than 10 days. That's just giving you a flat out period of time you're gonna be in there. You might be in there until the Son of God gets here, okay? But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Okay? So that may be that it's only 10 days. What the hell? Most people ain't gonna survive the first day. You think during that 10 days time they're gonna feed you? They're gonna give you water? Yeah, they're gonna give you foods that have been sacrificed to the idols. And they're gonna give you water that's been poisoned. That's these, who these people are, man. They're the devil the Bible speaks of. Okay? They can't be trusted. They're backstabbers. It tells you that in, uh, in Romans chapter 1, verse 26 to 33. It tells you who they are. Be thou faithful unto death and I will give thee a crown of life. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. But what's the second death? Thermonuclear destruction. Second Peter chapter three, verse 10. Let's get it. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. So the second death is the day of darkness thick clouds and gloominess. The day of the Lord. That is the second death. Right? Second Peter chapter 3 verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness but is long suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance. That all are Israelites to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the services of the Most High and the promises of salvation. Okay? Second Peter <clears throat> chapter 3 verse 10 But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. How's that going to work? A thermonuclear destruction, right? And the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burnt up, right? Let's go get Malachi chapter four. Verse one, the coming of the day of the Lord, the second death. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yep, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, and it shall leave them neither root nor branch, right? So two thirds of our people are gonna be cut off and exterminated and die on this side because they refuse to keep the law, statutes and commandments of the most high. That's all he asked you to do. And you can't do that. So expect death. You wanna smoke weed? Expect to die. You wanna eat pork, shrimp, crab and lobster? Expect death at your doorstep. The sword of the Lord are the Assyrians. The Assyrians are the modern day Edomites, the Caucasians, the white man, the devil the Bible speaks of. He's gonna use this industrial military complex to kick your door in at 2.33 o'clock in the fucking morning and drag you off to a FEMA camp. Okay, you can expect that shit to happen, but let it not be said that a prophet has not been among you to tell you these things before they happen. You had a chance to repent. You had a chance to turn around and do right. But you, you despised it. Let's get it. 
second Ezra. Chapter 9. Verse 9. Then shall they be in pitiful case which have now abused my ways. What are the ways of the Most High? Fear God and keep His commandments. That is the way of the Most High and the way of the Israelites of the Holy Bible. Right? Then shall they be in pitiful case which now have abused my ways and they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torments. Right? Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Right? For the devil shall cast some of you into prison. Right? For such as in their life have received benefits and have not known me and they that have loathed my law Right? Saying that the law is done away with, I can do what I want to do. I can dress how I want to dress. If I want to dress like a fucking woman and I'm a grown man, I can put on a wig and walk down the street wearing a goddamn dress. Right? Have loathed my law while they had yet liberty. So you have a grace period that has been given to you. Okay? They that have loathed my law while they had yet liberty and when as yet place of repentance was open unto them understood not but despised it the same must know it after death by pain and the pain that you're going to feel is the great fervent heat of thermonuclear devices hitting the earth thermonuclear implosions explosions great fervent heat you shall be left here and melted. Remember, the human body is made from elements of the periodic table. You are made from the dust of the earth. Remember that. Okay? And therefore, be not curious how the ungodly shall be punished and win, but inquire how the, how the righteous shall be saved, whose the world is and for whom the world is created. Then I answered and said, I have said before, now do speak, and will speak it here also, hereafter, that there be many more which perish than them which shall be saved. And the angel spoke and said, like as a wave is greater than a drop. So more people that are going to be, that are going to perish, is like a wave of water compared to a drop of people that shall be saved. Remember, during the flood, the Most High saved eight souls. That's it. He killed everybody else. So for you to tell me that God loves everybody is a lie. Malachi chapter 3 verse 6. I am the Lord thy God. I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Okay? So the God in heaven does not change. He loved one people. Okay, that's it. He don't love everybody. He sent his same his son to save that which was lost. Who are Israelites? Okay, he didn't come to tell them to save no spiritual Israelite. The only way you can be a spiritual Israelite is that you have to be one by bloodline, by kindred, according to the flesh, not according to your mama with that Judaistic ideology and that ish bullshit. You are either a J-E-W or you're not. There ain't no ish. Am I black ish? Brown ish? What is it? White ish? What the fuck? You Edomites have been pushing confusion and hypocrisy for far too long. The Most High Yahweh is coming to destroy you because of what you have done to his people. You have put your hand on the apple of the eye of the most high God in heaven that created the heavens, the earth, the sea, all that is therein, and the foundation of water. 
You're a goddamn dead man, Esau. Okay? Second Ezra chapter 8, verse 50. For many great miseries shall be done to them in the latter time shall dwell in the world because they have walked in great pride, right? Proud to be an American, proud to be a black woman, proud to be a black man with long fucking effeminate hair like a fucking woman. The, the Holy Scriptures tell you in the spirit that, and it teaches you that it is a shame for a man to have long hair. Okay? But that's the first thing you do is walk down the goddamn street with dreadlocks worshiping Shiva with Shiva chakras. Right? Shiva, the eight-armed goddess of destruction. Half man, half woman. That's what the fuck you do when you wear dreadlocks. You fucking idiot. Okay? Second Ezra. Chapter 8, verse 50. For many great miseries shall be done to them that in the latter time shall dwell in the world because they have walked in great pride. But understand thou for thyself and seek out the glory for such as be like thee. Right? And that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to seek out the glory and seek out those and try to persuade those to repent. To come out of the world. Out of the shadow of this world. Out of Esau's world. Stop trying to be like a Edomite, trying to fit in with the white man. At the end of the day, he's still gonna kill your black ass. Okay? It's a fact of life. He does not like you. He is pretending under color of law. Okay, remember, he stole this land from the indigenous population of people that were already here, okay, and set up his own laws to benefit him and his people, not you. Right? For unto you is paradise open. The tree of life is planted. The time to come is prepared. Plenteousness is made ready. A city is building. And rest is allowed. Yep, perfect goodness and wisdom. Right? The root of evil is sealed up from you. Weakness and the mob is hid from you. And corruption is fled into hell to be forgotten. Sorrows are past. And in the end, it shows the treasure of immortality. And therefore, ask thou no more questions concerning the multitude of them that perish. A wave is greater than a drop. So two-thirds of my people are going to be cut off and die but a third shall be left therein. The message are, is to Israelites. It's not to everybody in the world, man. Okay, and Israelites consist of Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. Right? For when they had taken liberty, they despised the Most High, thought scorn of His law, and forsook his ways. What are the ways of the Lord? To fear God and keep his commandments. This is the whole duty of man. That's your job from the time you come out your mama's hole to the time you die and be put in a fucking box. Okay? But then what do you do? You do the opposite. You say the law is done away with. I'm gonna do what I wanna do. I want to have a thousand kids with no, no, no baby's daddy. Right? But when they had taken liberty, they despised the Most High, thought scorn of His law, and forsook His ways. Moreover, they have trodden down His righteous, and said in their heart that there is no God. Yep and that knowing that they must die. Like I said earlier in the video, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Hamashiach to give account for the things that were done in our body, whether they be good or bad. 
So therefore, knowing the terror of the Lord, we do our best to persuade you to turn around and repent. Fear God and keep his commandments. Practice the righteous acts. Rehearse them. Right? Keep the Sabbath. Find out what day is the Sabbath on. Ask questions. Right? Follow these righteous epistles. These video epistles that uphold righteousness. Right? They're trying to get rid of the Bible. What kind of shit is that? I thought America was based on Bible principles. Now you want to get rid of it? What the fuck? You're a hypocrite. A nation full of hypocrites. Right? Fair use. Fair use. Okay? Fair use. Disclaimer. This video is for educational purposes only. Okay? Moreover, they have trodden down his righteous and said that there is no God yep, and that knowing that, that they must die. As for the things aforesaid shall receive you, so thirst and pain are prepared for them. For it was not his will that men should come to naught. So the Most High is still going to have mercy. Right? It tells you in Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 12, like I said earlier in the video. Damn. Okay, I'm gonna have to put that on another channel, another, another page. Let's get it. Jeremiah, chapter three, verse 12. Go and proclaim these words toward the north and say, return thou backsliding Israel, saith the Lord, and I will not cause mine anger to fall upon you, for I am merciful, saith the Lord, and I will not keep anger forever. Okay? So knowing the terror of the Lord, of the day of the Lord, that he shall come as a thief in the night, we persuade men. Okay? We're doing our best out here, preaching our hearts out to our people. But their hard-headed and stiff neck won't allow them to listen. It just bounces off their brain and they just keep right on going and act like they never heard anything. Right? For the Lord says, I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Right? That's the reason why we persuade men, knowing the terror of the Lord, knowing that after you die, you have to go give account for what you've done. Okay. Right? So we don't tell you in parables. We take the parables and break them down in, in layman's terms so you can understand the biblical scriptures and can stop and consider. Right? Matthew chapter 13, verse 11. And he answered and said unto them, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but unto them it is not given. For whosoever hath, to him shall be given, and he shall have more up in abundance. But whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away even that he had. Right? Matthew chapter 13, verse 11 through 12. See? So the Most High has already handpicked who he's going to save. Right? Right? Matthew chapter 23, verse 31. Wherefore ye be witnesses unto yourselves that ye are the children of them which kill the prophets. Right? Because, like it says, Father, they shall betray one another, right? And shall, they shall deliver you up and be afflicted and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then many shall be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another, right? So wherefore ye be witnesses unto yourselves 
that ye are the children of them which kill the prophets. Fill up then the measure of your prophets. Ye serpents, ye generation of pipers, how can ye escape the damnation of hell? Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them shall ye kill and crucify, and some of them shall ye scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city. They did the same thing, and like it tells you in the book of Maccabees, 1 Maccabees, chapter 41, let's get it. First Maccabees, chapter one. Verse 41, we'll start there. We'll stop at verse 50. No, nope, we'll stop at. I'm gonna skip around a little bit. Okay, 1 Maccabees chapter 1, verse 41. Moreover, King Antiochus Epiphanes wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people, right? Now, Nimrod did the same thing on the Tower of Babel. They're doing the same thing right now. They want everybody to be one people, right? They want everybody to join there and participate in their caste society. That's the reason why they're trying so hard to crash the United States petro dollar and get rid of it. Okay? And everyone should leave his laws. So the heathen agree according to the commandment of the king. Yep. Many also of the Israelites consented to his religion and sacrificed unto idols and profaned the Sabbath. Right? Why? Verse 49, to the end that they might forget the law and change all the ordinances, right? That's the reason why they're doing it right now. So this way we can forget about God and follow in behind him and follow him and do what he tells us to do, right? By pushing the, uh, the radio frequency identification microprocessor, right? That's what he's pushing. Right? And whosoever would not do according to the commandment of the king, he said he should die. Right? Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer, for behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. Satan doesn't own prisons, but the children of wickedness, his children do. Esau, Edom, the so called white man. Right? They own all the prisons. Okay? In the self-same manner, wrote he to his whole kingdom and appointed overseers over all the people, commanding the cities over all the people to, of Judah to sacrifice city by city, right? Then many of the people were gathered unto them to wit everyone that forsook the law, and so they committed evils in the land, right? That's the, way, that's the reason why they're wearing these dreadlocks and dressing like whores and sluts in the street pussy popping and smoking weed and shooting each other down in the street like it's going out of style. Evils are being committed in the land because there's no law to govern the people. Right? The law is done away with. Do as thou will. See? Hey, sister, you know you're an Israelite, right? Yeah. Okay. I, have you thought about repentance? Why not? You see that shit? Hold on, y'all should have seen that. Y'all should have seen that. <laughs> she wagged her hand. You don't think nothing about repentance? Yeah. It tells you all these words, all these stuff, all you know, I'm all this information out here. I put this out here for people like you. That at the most high would save you and move you out of the way. You know? I mean, that's why I'll come out here and try to save you, try to convince you. Because these people are going to pass a law that says that the Bible is done away with. You ain't going to be able to find the truth. Okay, that's where we're at in the biblical timeline. Did you know 
that the letter J is 500 years old? How can Jesus be the name of the Son of God? The man was crucified 2,000 years ago. It's a gap of 1,500 years. Somebody lying somewhere. See? The so-called Ish people of today are biblically known as the nation of Amalek. Right, have a good day. See, they just wave off the truth. They don't give a fuck. You know, that's all they want is get a paycheck, go home, pay their bills, take care of their family. Okay. They, they are perfectly willing to take the radio frequency identification chip in order to follow in behind Esau Edom. They don't want to talk. They don't want to consider. You see what I'm saying? They can pick their own souls. Right? We're supposed to seek out those that be such as be like me. Right? I'm trying, but it's hard, man. It's like trying to find a goddamn needle in a haystack. <laughs> I tell you, man, every other Israelite, they don't, they don't, they just don't give a shit. They really don't. Right? Maccabees, 1 Maccabees chapter 1, verse 53. And drove the Israelites into secret places, even whensoever they could flee for succor. They got a new movie coming out. The Disciples, right? Okay, and this movie is supposed to be after they banned the Bible, after they banned Christianity, and shut down all the churches, and people are still trying to go to church, and they're doing the same thing as what happened during the time of Peter and Paul, where people were trying to hide after King Antiochus Epiphanes had passed the law saying it was illegal for you to be an Israelite. Okay, that's what they're doing, man. They're wicked, okay? And they're doing the same fucking thing all over again. Like I said earlier in the video, these devils have no changes. Therefore, they fear not the most high. They don't fear God. They think they are God. They think they, they, got, a, they got a fucking God complex, man. Right? First Maccabees, chapter one, Verse 56, and when they had written in pieces the books of the law, which they found, they burnt them with fire. And whosoever was found with any of the book of the Testament, the Old Testament or the New Testament, which is the Bible, right? Okay. Or if any consented to the law, of any of those that rehearse the righteous acts, that fear God and keep his commandments, right? The king's commandment was to the law that they should put them to death. Thus they did this by their authority unto the Israelites every month to as many as was found in the cities. This is the time of great trouble. Okay, this is the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay. Only those found written in the book of life, in the book of remembrance, that fear the Most High God and keep His commandments and thought upon His name in these latter days are the only ones that are going to be saved out of the coming madness. So with that, I'm going to close up shop. I tried. I did the best I could. They clearly don't give a shit about their own soul salvation. Clearly. Okay? So I'm going to close up shop. All praises to the Most High, Yahweh, Barashim, Yahweh Shai, Barashim, Nekakadash. Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone for pushing 100% truth and rule well, and peace and salutations to the hopeful elect. It's a damn shame that my people don't give a damn about their own soul's salvation. Shalom. Hope it brought some edification.